All right, for our short Tuesday video this week, we are going to take some poster board, some acrylic paint, and some fun tools, and we're going to make some flooring for the bathroom. Stay tuned and see how easy this is to do. Alright, so we're making, like I probably said in the intro, we are making the flooring that's going to go in the bathroom of the beachside bungalow. Uh, the, my concept or my, the look I'm going for is for, you know, that the rolls of linoleum that you buy like a Home Depot or wherever and it comes on a big roll and they roll it out and they, you know, fasten it to your floor. That's the kind of floor we're going to replicate for the bathroom in the beachside bungalow. The rest of it's going to have wood floors. Um, I'm using poster board. I've got 11 by 14 inch poster board. I picked this up at Family Dollar. I've seen the same thing at Dollar Tree. You can also use the bigger sheets from Dollar Tree or from wherever you get them from. Uh, you can even use the colored sheets. In my Harrison, when I did the kitchen floor, I had a chunk of that really bright blue poster board left over from a project. And I actually did it on that, and it worked really, really well. I loved it, and that's the first time I did this. That was a total experiment. So what did I do? I've, I've got my poster board out here. And what I've done is I've gone through, I took a sheet, and I kind of played around with colors and with applicators. So I went through my wallpapers that I bought. And a couple of weeks ago, I showed you all the wallpapers. And I think, I'm kind of thinking, kind of leaning towards this shell one for the bathroom. I haven't decided for sure. I'll decide later. But I kind of went through and decided, okay, what colors were prominent in those wallpapers? So grays and blues and a little brown. So I've got some white acrylic paint. Excuse the filthy bottles they're in. Um, I've got a tube of Crafter Square acrylic paint in, I think this is probably just a generic blue color. I don't know they even name them. I've got a cream color, I've got a pale gray, I've got a darker gray called rainy day gray, I've got a couple of darker blues, I've got a really pale bluish gray, and I've got one brown. Uh, I kind of played around, I, this one had a teal color I really wanted to use, but I just couldn't make it work. And then I played with different applicators. Um, this one here, I used one of these makeup sponges for. This one and these, in fact, all three of these, and I think this one, are all done just with cotton balls from the drugstore. Um, this one down here is done with a cotton ball from the craft store, and then this is just a piece of a kitchen sponge. So for our project today, I'm going to go with just regular cotton balls from the drugstore. I've got a lid. This is just a plastic lid. This was actually off of my dishwasher pods. <laughs> it's a really good size for a palette and I love the fact it's got a raised edge on it so paint won't run off of it. But I'm just going to squirt out some of each of these colors and you don't need a lot. Um, but I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to get all the colors squirted out and then I'll be back. All right, and I do recommend that you take a sheet of your poster board or whatever you're going to use and experiment with colors because you'll be able to kind of narrow down what you want to use, what colors you want, and how you want to do it. Also, experiment with different applicators. So I am going to do the whole sheet, even though I'm not going to use the whole sheet. That way, I can pick the best part. So I've put all my colors out, and I'm going to put this off to the side. Hopefully you guys can still see it. And I'm not going to do this all in one sitting either. I'm going to start, I think, with one of these dark blues. And kind of pounce it off in the middle first, and then off to the edge. And just kind of start out. And at first you're just making splotches of color. It's okay. And then I like to go back to where I kind of pounced it off to pick up more. That way I'm not picking up a huge amount on my cotton ball. And 
And sometimes I'm going to use a new cotton ball for each color, and sometimes I'll use the same cotton ball for multiple colors. So I'm going to kind of pounce over those. All right, that's probably all I'm going to do with that. Then I'm going to go to, I think, this light gray or dark gray. This is the darker of the two grays. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's spring, so my sinuses are protesting. You'd think, well, actually, technically it's summer. My sinuses still think it's spring. And now in the center of my palette, my blue is getting mixed into my gray. That's okay. It's fine. If you want them separate, you could always have a separate uh, palette to kind of pounce off on and pounce off in a separate place for each one. But kind of the idea of this is they do get blended. They do mix together. And yeah, it doesn't look like much now, does it? But we're going to work away at this. So that's that one. I'm only going to show you one more color, and then I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go work on this off camera because this is going to get really boring if I do this for the next, you know, couple of hours for you. You're probably not going to enjoy that. So I'm just going to keep at this. I'm going to kind of go back and forth, dark color, light color, dark color, light color, blue, gray, you know, whatever. Whatever colors grab my eye, I'm going to do when I get done with this layer. I'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so here's where we are now. I did pull out another lid to kind of use as a palette because colors were getting a little too muddy. And this one I could wipe off without disturbing my colors. And you can see I didn't use much of the white I've used and not much of the brown, but I used, and I had to put more of this one out. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna decide if I need to add any more to it. Usually I put two coats on, but I might decide this is good enough. We will see. So let's let this dry, and then I'll come back and we'll take a look. All right, so this is dry, and I like what I've got, but I want it a little lighter, a little brighter. So I'm going to use a clean palette. By the way, I just run this through the dishwasher, and it cleans it off. I don't know how good that is for my dishes, but I figure acrylic paint's not poisonous. So I'm going to use this, what is this color called? It's called Slate Blue. I'm going to use that and the gray, the lighter gray, which is called Pale Gray. And I think the cream, I don't think I want any more white on. And I'm going to use the sponge because now I want something very loose. Kind of, and I'm going to do that with all of them, all the colors. It's okay to have some spots that don't have paint, but I want to kind of, I think I'm going to use my, just my, my craft paper here on my table to the side to kind of blot this a little more. So any place I see that I think is just a little too, too intensely colored, and I'm mixing the colors on my sponge. If you have, um, a natural sea sponge that would be really good here too but I don't have one and quite frankly I don't feel like going anywhere to get one I uh, realized the other day I hadn't been out shopping in over a month and it's really nice I mean, I walk to the grocery store, and it's I, I, I'm adapting to this apartment living with stores nearby, I will tell you. So, I don't want to do too much. I think I'm going to, oops, I'm going to do that part. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to let this dry. And when this is dry, I'll decide if I'm done or if I need to put a little more color on it. So I'll be back when it's dry. All right, this is all dry, and I'm happy with it. Um, you can put on as much or as little color as you want. Uh, you can do any color you want. And I'm not going to use the whole piece, so I can pick and choose when I get ready to, to cut it. 
So I am going to put a coat of Satin Mod Podge on this just to seal it, give it a slight shine, make it look a little more like it's supposed to look, like a, a vinyl flooring. Now normally I would use my sponge brush, which I know I saw yesterday, and I can't find it anywhere today. So I've got the softest brush I could find, and I would imagine when I clean this and go to put it away, I will find my sponge brush. But I am just going to put not a very heavy coat, because remember we are working with paper. And poster board is, after all, paper. I'm going to pour a little more. Now, I always work out of a container just in case. I don't like to work out of the jar of Mod Podge. When I'm working over something like I just painted this a few hours ago, if there would be a little dab of paint that's still wet and I pick it up with my brush and I transfer it into here, I would ruin the whole jar. If I transfer it into here, I'm not going to lose much. So that's why I do that. Now I have slipped a piece of baking parchment, just this stuff, like you use in the kitchen. This is really helpful in the craft room when you are uh, doing any kind of painting project. And don't worry, this will roll up a bit. It's gonna, it's gonna warp. It's okay. Um, if it warps too badly, I'll show you how to fix it. And try not to have super, like don't go all one direction because then any lines, any brush marks are going to be more noticeable actually. This way it'll kind of look like that pattern that's on a lot of um, vinyl flooring. And I, I think I finished my thought about the parchment paper. I moved it to parchment paper because it won't stick to that and I can move this then and not have to worry about it sticking to wherever I move it to. So I'm just going to put a coat of this on. It's going to look milky. When it dries, it will be clear and it's a satin finish. So that will be that. When this is dry, I will come back and show you how it looks. All right, the Mod Podge is dry and this came out really almost exactly the way I wanted it to. I'm very, very happy. And you'll get to see this used in the bathroom after we get the wallpaper and all that stuff done. Then we'll put this down in there. Um, but you can do any kind of design you want to do. Uh, you can go much heavier. I wanted it a little lighter and a little airier. Uh, in place, I mean, on the paper it looks kind of weird, but I know that once it gets in the bathroom, it gets the bathroom fixtures around it. It's what I wanted. So you can do a lot more to yours. You can make it a much heavier, much thicker paint design. You can go lighter paint. Uh, you could even do some rubber stamping or something like that or stenciling and do a design that way on. The poster board is just a great palette to use, basically a canvas for making linoleum and then cover it in Mod Podge. Um, another thing, and if the wall, <laughs> when we get to working in the bathroom, I'll show you. My glue had not been dry when I had to move the dollhouse off the table the day I put it in, and my wall shifted so the bathroom, the wall between the bedroom and the bathroom is no longer as straight as I would like it, and I didn't figure that out until after the glue had dried. So I am going to leave it. But if that was not the case, then I would be very tempted to take a paint marker and make like faux grout lines on this to make it look like the rolled tile, the, the kind of flooring that's supposed to look like fake tile. But let your imagination go wild and do whatever design you want with using the poster board as a base, the acrylic paint, a little bit of satin Mod Podge, and you've got linoleum for your dollhouse. So I hope this was useful. Be sure and check the blog post. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll have a list of all the paint colors I used and a few photos. I forgot to take a lot of pictures while I was working on this. I just kind of got down into it and started playing with paint and forgot to take photos. But I will list the colors that I used. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you find this channel useful, please hit that subscription button so you 
and hit the notification bell so you know that when I've put a new video up. If you like the video, push that like button. That tells YouTube to show it to other people. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.